Welcome. We're glad you're here. We're going to talk about camera capabilities and a very important subject, actually. It's called you. And before we talk about what we really are getting down to nuts and bolts with f-stop shutter speeds, ISOs, things like that, we really want to address what it is that we want to do in photography. So let's get going. Let's ask ourselves a few questions. What is it and I'm going to ask you, what is it that you like to photograph? And what would you like to photograph? Ask yourself also, if I like to do this now and I'd like to do that later, what camera capabilities do I need? Now, you won't need to know any names for any camera parts or controls or anything else to answer questions like that right now. Just think about what it is you'd like to be able to do with your camera. This will help you learn about camera concepts and image concepts and idea concepts and then consider whether the camera equipment you have right now is sufficient for what you'd like to do. Do you want to photograph birds in nests? Do you want to photograph your children playing football? How about a UFO up in the sky? Well, maybe you need a telephoto lens. A telephoto lens helps make distance subjects appear larger. Maybe you'd like to photograph postage stamps. Maybe uh, you're an engineer and you need to photograph a defective bolt in a machine. Or maybe you're a jewelry store owner and you want to make photographs of jewelry to put it on eBay or show your customers. Maybe a macro lens. A macro lens is one that allows you to focus on very small subjects, focus very close. Maybe that's what you need. Maybe your daughter is playing on a soccer team and you'd like to make a photograph the instant she kicks that ball. Maybe you're on vacation, there's a beautiful stream, you're out in the woods, you're watching the water flow by and you'd like to make a picture that shows that flow in a misty, airy kind of moment. Well, in the first instance with the girl kicking the ball, you'll need a camera that has a very fast shutter speed. In the second instance, blurry water, you'll need a very slow shutter speed. Same thing if you want to photograph the taillights of cars as they streak by you on the road at night. Every parent has had this experience. Open the door, make sure the child is sleeping, and you see a scene that you just love to capture. Um, in that instance, you'll need to be able to photograph in a very dark situation, unless you're going to flip the lights on and wake, wake your child up. Another instance might be out on a bright beach scene, photographing the water, the boats, or maybe the family. Very different situations in terms of lighting, and to handle those, you'll often need a wide range of ISO levels. Well, what's ISO? ISO stands for actually International Standards Organization, and that's a group of people that measure things. One of the things that they measure is the sensitivity of a sensor to light. Did you know those terms? Did you think about them in terms of your own photography before now? Thinking like a photographer, this is really important. And using technical terms such as macro lens, telephoto, shutter speed, ISO, these are important things in your self-talk that can jumpstart your progress in photography tremendously. What types of things have you never photographed? That's a good thing to think about. What's immediately available in your area that can challenge yourself to make photographs that will break into a new way of thinking or a new field of photography or camera work, new subject matter? To make it any of those kinds of photographs, whether they're the ones that you're comfortable with making right now or the ones you'd like to make in the future or the new ones you just got an idea for, you'll need to know what the capabilities are of the camera in photography to be able to capture those images. And in order to do that, you'll have to grow your vocabulary of terms that relate to these specific things, these specific concepts, these specific technical things in photography. Those terms are jargon. Those are essential to building your understanding of the ways that you can use your equipment 
and your creativity to make more successful pictures. In fact, if I had to be honest, this class is basically a vocabulary class. Well, what cameras could meet your needs? Well, maybe it's a smartphone. Maybe it's a point and shoot or maybe a compact. Maybe a digital single lens reflex, also called DSLR, or maybe it's a mirrorless camera. Well, maybe those are all new terms to you also. Understanding that vocabulary allows you to understand the capabilities that you need in a camera, what those general broad categories of camera are capable of, and how you can apply them to making your photographs better. Not only that, but how you understand the camera you presently own and how you look for the camera you're going to buy next.